Okay, I'll get back on this bike here after a couple days. Just gonna change out this brake fluid now. So this has been sitting there for a couple days, so hopefully it's soaked up all the nasty stuff. It appears it probably did. Still a lot of goo down in there though. Okay, I'm gonna try to scrape up all this jelly that's down in the bottom here. Whatever's down in there. I'm not sure what all that junk is. It's got a layer of silicone down there or something. Oh yeah, look at that. I don't think that's what you want in your brake system. I'm not sure what that was, but... I'm Pretty sure I didn't want that in there. Maybe it's something special just for Indians, who knows. So you just take a screwdriver in here and kind of run through the holes and slots and grooves here and try to clean it up a little bit more. Try to look a little cleaner. I'll put the clean part in there. Much more stuff we poke up here. More of it. All right. Some more of that stuff in there, whatever this is. I don't know what that is. Petrified something. Yeah. Where did it go? I know it didn't go away. Feels like plastic of some type. Whatever it is, I don't want it in my master cylinder here. All right, I got that pretty well cleaned out. Okay, so I'll put some fresh, fresh stuff in here. This is purple, so I'll see it. The other stuff is kind of a yellowish color. This is purple. So purple, you can see very easily what it is. This is dot five. So I have to worry about spilling on anything. It won't do any damage. Not that I want to do that anyway. Okay. All right. We're going to work our brake very slowly there and see what happens. A nice positive flow. When you get that big pooch up like that, that means there's no air in the system. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to do this down below. This is going to be fun doing it by myself. All right, so take a couple washers and put it underneath the brake bleeder. When you put your 3 8 wrench on there, it doesn't go past it. You'll be able to pull on it tight, and otherwise you go past it and it just slips up and down. And you want to use a 6-point wrench, not a 12. That's less chance of doing damage. Okay, another trick is you want to put this underneath the out of the bolt here. Just make you poke it through like that. At least try to. It's fun to do with one hand. Okay. That'll keep a lot of it off the caliper. We'll take this dirty rag here and stuff it over here. We want to try to keep it out of the brake. Off of the brakes and everything. We don't care if it goes on the rack. That's not an issue. Just don't want to break. Okay. So now we're gonna have to go up here and somehow work the work the brake camera in, bleed it. So I'm gonna put this over here so you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up there and pull on the lever, 
little pressure on it, reach down, open up the valve, let's square whatever it wants out, close the valve, let go of the brake up there, lever, and that should suck fresh fluid into the system. Uh, if you let the lever come back before you lock that down down there, it sucks a big load of air in the system and you got air in it. So you always want to make sure you close that under some kind of positive pressure, preferably. So we'll go ahead and see what we get out of that. You'll probably get some nice, nasty, pukey looking fluid. All right. Put pressure on it. And I'm in the line of fire over here. Whatever's in there, close it, lever out, the pressure on it slowly, do it again. Let's do this a few times. That was three, one more. Okay, stop. So much fluid we got left in the system. We're still pretty full. So I'm going to keep going. Let's see. I can't tell what color fluid we're getting, but at least we're getting fluid. about six times now seven there's eight check the reservoir again about half full still and we'll give it a four more times there's one two Three. Go halfway this time and stop. Close it under pressure. So we want to close it under pressure so you don't get no air in the system. And it looks like it's got the purple tint to it over there, so that's a good sign. Got a lot of fluid on my hand now. So, the towel looks like under there it's got purple tint to it. I'd be shocked if I didn't have cleaning fluid coming out of the last few times anyway. I can't see it on the towel below, so I'm not sure. Okay, so let me come up here. See how much fluid I used. So that was a full container, so we're about halfway down. So we're good. So I'm going to make sure we got, make sure we got the same amount of squirt coming up. Oh, a little more healthier than what it was. I squeezed a little bit too fast, one or the other. like the uh, sight glass might be leaking a little bit here. Yeah. It's not leaking, but it is moving. <laughs> it's probably seeping a little bit out of the side there. Needs a new kit put in it. Probably get all new rubber components, but for now it's working, so I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so now I'm going to put some fluid back in there, top it off. So we'll make sure that's all up to the top, pretty close. Easy about an eighth inch from the top is what we do. Reach across. 
across. Oh, what are we looking at over there? Hey, look at that squat. So I'm going to put a little more fluid in here, bring it up top. That's enough. Like I said, you only want to bring it about an eighth of an inch from the top right there. Well, the bike's at an angle. When you go up a little bit, it gets a little lower, but I can only do so much right now. I could probably cheat a little bit, get a little more fluid in there. Yeah, you can probably get a little bit more. I like having them fairly full. If you got more fluid in there, you get less chance of error. That's always a good thing. Okay. Make sure your reservoir is not damaged or anything. That rubber has to be good or it'll be or it'll leak air and moisture into your system. Okay, so I'm gonna lift up the handlebar a little bit to get the fluid level where I can get to it. So I'm pick up the bar a little bit there. Put that down. Hope we don't get any fluid leakage. Screws in there. Good shot of nothing, probably. Yeah, I'm over here working. Too high. Okay, kind of wiggle down, let it center up a little bit. Tighten on just barely until it touches. If you see this rubber pooch out a little bit on the side, that's enough pressure, no extra. Doesn't take much, I'm gonna go like that with my fingers. So when you do that, you're not losing any of the material. See, so watch, as I turn this, you can see the rubber come out slightly. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't take much pressure. Didn't spill anything, but I'll wipe it down anyway. I just spilled some out the bottom, so wipe off anything that might be down there. I don't feel anything, but wipe it off just to make sure. Okay. Now we have a brake lever here. Okay, I'm gonna make sure the brake actually works. Go clean up down below first. Good to work on that. Get that out of the way. Doesn't look like we got anything on the caliper. Nice and dry. Pull out the two washers up on there. Wipe off anything you might see. Get rid of the towel. Let's go. Make sure you get everything off. No enough fluid going on anything. To get brake fluid anything, you just brake clean it off to get it off anything. Brakes don't work too good when they're full of fluid on them. Let's see if I feel anything here. Feels dry. Nothing on the rotor, that's good. <clears throat> Still got it on my hand though. All right, one more towel here on my hand. It's down for a minute. So now we go ahead and see how the brake works. Hands cleaned up pretty good. Okay, so basically we're just going to turn the front wheel, and work the caliper together. So you want to make sure the wheels are working nice and smoothly. Every time I hit the brake, it hits hard and it releases instantly. I'm just pulse and brake up here with my finger, up here. Nice and quick. You're feeling for any, any drag here. You want it to be a nice clean release every time you hit it.
Okay, feels good. Also, you want to make sure the brake lever is not bleeding down when you got pressure on it. See, it stays nice and firm. It's not bleeding. It comes in quick. There's no way you ever bottom this out. You have to break a line to do that. So there's no air in the system. All right, so that's how you bleed the brakes on these things. Make sure everything works good. I like it's supposed to. Okay, let's see. That's about it for doing this bike. Next thing is to start it up and see if it'll run. I'm going to wait until he does something with the gasoline there. I don't particularly want to change it, so we'll let him play with it. All right, so he might be by today or might be another day tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, it might be a day or it might be another half hour before we start it, but more than likely probably another day. So for today, that's it for now for the brakes. I got all the chassis stuff done that I need to get done. So you know, just start it up, make sure it runs good. And we should be good to go. And hopefully it brings a key so I can start it. I have no key right now. Alright, that's it for now.